you know, Katie doesn't get enough credit for what she's contributed. Uh, Katie is the reason there is a 10K, okay? It's important to remember, Katie is the reason, along with others, there is a regional trainer program. Uh, amongst many other things, she's fun, she's entertaining, and she's really smart, and to share with you how to sell to builders and remodelers um, is Katie, and this is a couple things you need to know about her. She's known for her creative hustle. This is a, a quote by a top agent in the Northeast. Uh, her number one hobby is dance video games, which you will witness tonight. Uh, 2.1 million-ish in career sales. Started as a receptionist when she was 17, and now she's the boss. Sharing it with you, Katie Haney. I'm sorry. That's what my mega church called it. Um, all right, so I came up here. Um, I want first thing I wanted to say is we all own businesses for different reasons, and I went to this conference like a couple years ago for women business owners, and they said a, a really big reason a lot of people, not just women, but own businesses, is because it's, it is their vehicle to it's their vehicle to give back to the community, and you guys are my community, and um, I hope. I hope my intention is that you get some ideas, like spark some excitement or whatever. I hope you can take some from this because I've really enjoyed teaching some of this to a few of you in the room and I've already got stories here of some really cool things that have happened. So I'm really excited about that. And so I'm going to talk about three things today. This is before John Broman's talk. I actually structured it like he told me to um, before I even heard him talk. But we're going to talk about number one, like state of the industry and trends. And um, number two, I'm going to give you specific ways you can change or add to your script. Because I mean, I'm not like, not, I mean, we all, we're all on the realtor program, but like we've all sold to, you know, other other businesses. I know a lot of you sold to you know dentists, insurance agents, people that sell. I don't know. There's so many things that people sell that they buy gifts for their clients. So, um, but I'm gonna give you some specific things that you can add. And some of you might have appointments with builders this week, and you might be able to sell a little bit more. Um, so, state of the industry, how to change your script, and um, number three will be just like how to do it. Like here's what to do. I hope you guys take some action on it, and um, that's it. So. Yeah, I always like to bring something to the community to give back because I've got, I've gotten more than I deserve from Cutco and from all of you. So that's uh, I always like to bring something. Most years I bring my babies, and that's a benefit to everybody because have you seen their faces? It's ridiculous. Um, but my super husband and baby daddy is taking care of them this week, and they're having a blast. So I keep getting pictures. I brought the 10 pay last year, and that actually we have to give credit to Mara for that because she created the 10 pay ultimate set like over a decade ago and then I stole it for the realtor program. Um, and then number three is, you know, that, that I brought this year, I want to maybe add a new market. Um, I want to give you guys some numbers just so you can kind of understand how this might, I mean, this is not like going out and selling to builders. I don't think it would be something that would like replace your business. It's not going to replace mine. There's this guy in our market, um, Nick might know him, Diane, AJ Vogler. He's a, I don't know what he sells, realtor or something, but he's always posting like motivational quotes. And the other day he posted the average millionaire has seven streams of income. So I hope maybe this can just become another stream of income for you like it has for me. Um, so how I started with this is, um, I don't know if you guys ever heard John Rowland. He uh, moved to St. Louis from Ohio, you know, like from 2009 or 2010. And he, we, were, we were chatting and he's like, okay, you guys need to join the Home Builders Association. Because John does a ton of business with builders and, you know, I don't know, NASCAR drivers and God knows, Orlando Magic, you know, sweet owner or something. But he, he sold a lot of builders. So he moved to St. Louis and he said, you know, somebody should, we should join the Home Builders Association. It's really like thriving and there's a lot of good people in it. So, um, you know, we went ahead and joined. And the first year, didn't really do much with it. The second year, I started actually like, go to everything and I was just kind of like a sponge for new um, information and just kind of learning about the industry and um, in the first year I really didn't sell anything I was just there like making friends and um, to give you guys some numbers I did a quick Google search there's basically a, there's some Google search like there's 1.1 million realtors in the country so that's kind of our market but then obviously we sell lenders and a lot of people in the real estate industry to give you an idea of builders, there's, um, there were 73,000 builders in 2005, and obviously the economy crashed in 2008, and that obviously really affected the home building industry because people couldn't get loans and nobody had any money. 
So now there's actually about 34,000 builders. So it's a lot different than, you know, 34,000 builders and there's 1.1 million realtors. It's a bigger market, but if you guys think about, like, what, what types of things are in houses? Like, what goes into a house? Anything you think of right now, hopefully you saw like 30 things, there's someone that sells that stuff and they give gifts to their clients. So it's kind of an unlimited opportunity and it's really exciting. So um, that's something to keep in mind as I give you some tips on number three. Um, you know, if there's not just builders, there's a lot of people that service the builders and those can really be some of your very best clients. Um, so let's see. So thank you to Roland for making me join the HPA and then not paying me back to be in it. I'm just kidding. Um, so anyway, number two, um, I'm going to talk about just how to change your script. Really what I did is I just kind of like started doing the realtor script for builders and then they would just be like, they, like it would be over their head some parts. So I was like, oh, that doesn't apply to them. Or they'd be like, actually, this has worked. So I would just add that to my script. So I'm still learning. And I, 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 I added like 85 new clients this year. So I still have a lot to learn, but um, this is what I've learned so far. Um, the first question I ask a builder or remodeler or whatever when I'm meeting with them is, do you have a gifting system in place? A lot of them don't. It's not like realtors were like, that's taught. There's really, look, actually a really cool thing about the building industry is they're not marketing experts like realtors are. Or realtors are supposed to be. Um, they are, they're, they're not marketing experts. If they're bigger, they might have a marketing department that's really good. Um, and those have been actually really good resources for me, the marketing departments of big builders. But, um, a lot of them don't know anything about like referrals and they just know how to build a house. They just know like they've been, you know, working with dad or mom, no, more like dad since they were you know, younger putting up the walls and stuff. So do you have a gifting system in place? And a lot of times the answer is no. A lot of times like they, maybe they've done some stuff, but you know, what I would say is, yeah, most, that's cool. Like most people, most builders like either give gifts or know they should give gifts but they don't really have a system in place. And so I kind of go through the, the whole script that's basically the same as the, as the realtor script. But um, one thing that I talk about, oh, actually, this is like random, but I just have it in my notes here. Uh, they don't like red. I, I like, they don't buy red. I have like one builder that buys red. It, it's, they're just like, ugh, no, never. So yeah, I guess you can show it, but most of them are buying the white. It's kind of like, they're not, it's not necessarily like, um, they're not really into like cheesy marketing. It's all about like classy. And a lot of times I do the logo like one third of the size that it would be on a realtor um, piece. Like they ask that. So they kind of like want more subtle, classy branding. Um, I take out the tax deduct deduction because that doesn't apply. And um, one th thing that's kind of cool about builders is they can basically like they give the bill to the client. So like they can roll the price of the gift in with the, um, the house. So you're, you know, got a $200,000 house, they can roll a $200 gift in to, I know it sounds really shady, but it's, that's just what they do. So uh, you can mention that. So there's no like tax deduction. Um, one thing I talk a lot, a, lot, a lot about with them, like the biggest thing I focus on is just that it's a system in place. And what I say like verbatim, but always like, they're like, oh my God, that's totally what I think all day is, um, you know, we know that your priority is not really gifting or, or marketing. Um, your priority is to find the next best tract of land or design the next best floor plan. So those are kind of like two words that are used. Yeah, so your, your priority is not like gifting. It's, um, it's really finding the next best tract of land, you know, designing the best floor plan, finding clients. So basically, you, you know, we know gifting is like important, but it's like 600 on your to-do list. That's what I always say, I kind of laugh. So it's 600 on your to-do list. So really the big, the big reason we have so many home builders that use this is um, it's a system in place for you. We're gonna get you a year's supply of gifts to keep on hand. So you have them for your closing. Um, you have them for your charity events. And I'm gonna actually like dive deep on this because it is like probably sold me a ton of Cutco this year. How many of you guys talk about charity auction gifts on your realtor? Okay, cool. Yeah, I wish you raising their hand. So like, and I don't know, um, Okay, so we'll talk about that in a second. Um, another, I don't know if any of you do like three one-on-ones. I got this from Jeff Teresi. He calls all his realtors and sets up three one-on-ones with them. And the way he, you know, phrases it is, um, okay, so he calls them up and just says, hey, Mrs. Realtor, um, one thing, I want to let you know one thing I'm doing this year with all my clients 
is I'm setting up a time to meet with you for either 10 minutes over the phone or in person to go over some new enhancements to our gift program. And just for meeting with me, I'm going to buy you a piece of Cutco um, for your kitchen. So you guys should be doing that for all your realtors. And if there's, there's five points I go through, which I'm not going to dive into them unless you want to know at the end. But the one thing that I've like started saying on that appointment is I ask them, have you ever had someone hit you up for a donation for a charity event? Like a silent auction, like giveaway. And most realtors and every single builder will be like, oh my gosh, yeah, because a builder's job is to like, put the billboards up, get in the community, know everybody. So they're like all over the place. So they, they go to like a million charity events a year and they're always you know, giving something at it. So when you ask this question, when you say, you know, most builders give these for closing gifts, charity auction gifts, you know, it could add like another three to 50 gifts on your, on your order. And you want to say it with all the realtors too, because their job is to be in the community. And if they're already like giving, I always say, um, you know, you don't want to say no to people when they ask you for a gift, right? Because it's charity, that's why you're doing all of this, right? To give back to your community. So um, instead of giving cash or a gift card, give them one of your engraved Cutco gifts. Because our job is to get conversation sparked about you in the community. Think about a style auction, like who goes to that stuff? It's people that um, are connected in the community, people have money, people are fun and like to drink, wine, you know? So they're gonna see your name. You never know when a conversation's gonna get sparked like Jimmy Collison sold me Cutco 20 years ago. Oh, that's cool. This builder like has a set here. So um, that's something that builders get like super into, and you should say that on all your realtor appointments too. Um, the gifts that we sell the most, like 90% of our builder clients, are the 3836 and 3852. Um, the, so that's like the petite. <laughs> Like Adam was saying back in the day when we just named the sets by their pieces. I still don't know the actual names of the sets. Um, the Petite Santoku and the Santoku Tremor is what we sell the most of. And then the um, 3852, which is the Shears and Santoku Tremor. And I, I mean, I cut a penny on every appointment. It's so like the very beginning when I talk about Cutco, I always cut a penny. Like it, builders are usually guys, and their guys love the penny cut. So you should do it for everybody. But. Um, Okay, this is something, you guys might know this already, but I just discovered this is a really awesome tool for the Realtor program because I've been able to get in with Realtors that like, I never see at team meetings, they're never at anything, but they're really good Realtors that have come up with like super good marketing and have just gotten good at their job, they are marketing to builders, that's it. So like two huge Realtors I've got on the program, like the order of you know, 100 or 150 gifts is because they are at all the builder stuff that I'm at. And before they wouldn't give me a time of day because I never saw them. Like I didn't, they were, their name was like up at the, all the office stuff, but I just didn't really have a relationship. So is Nick in the room? Linda and Kelly Bamer, they're each like 400 pounds. They're awesome. They're, they're, they're good. They're good at life. And they, but they're awesome. They, they sell a lot of the builders and they buy a lot of cut code and it's really fun. Um, but the cool thing, that was kind of me, sorry, but they're really nice. Um, and, so let's see, you're seen as a resource. Okay, so, oh, that's another thing, like, I'm gonna go into how to do this all, but when you join, if you join your Home Builders Association, um, your experience with realtors is like a huge benefit because they don't, they don't have a lot of like people that are necessarily good at marketing or like have a marketing experience. When you come in and you say, you know, I wanna join as an affiliate, I work with like 800 realtors or 200 realtors, they're like, oh, so you can actually like, bring all the expertise that you've built up in the last six months to eight years and kind of, you know, teach the teach them how to market a little bit. So they're going to see you as a resource, which is cool. Um, another thing you can promote um, as gifts is, so closing gifts, charity auction gifts, and then I always say, like, preferred partners and trade partners. So they're all in business. So it's, kind of, it's like our HBA and probably every HBA, is like, it's like a family. Like, once you're in, it's like, that's your family, and, like, they all, like, want to give back to each other and they're all helping each other out. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for them to, for them for gifts. Okay, so a little bit more. Okay, so number three, just like how to do this if you if you want to dive in. Um, it's kind of like anything else and maybe more so than the realtor program. It's like, it, it takes a really long time to build up and it could be, could be that I just joined, I joined, when I joined the Home Builders Association in like 2011, if there was only, yeah, there was like half the people in it that used to be because of the crash. So it wasn't like this huge, like it didn't, it wasn't something like built up really quick. And it's kind of like we get spoiled because, you know, some of us, some of us complain it took like six months to get an order. Most people that start a business, like a restaurant or 
anything, it takes like years. So um, it's not something that happens overnight, and it's not cheap like to join the Home Builder Association, or it's not like a realtor association, they're like between six and or six hundred and a thousand dollars. So it's not something you want to like join and then just not do anything with like I did the first year. If you put the money into it, you want to actually like, go to stuff. And that's uh, the biggest thing with, with this and I hope some of you are thinking like, well, why not just builders? Like why not, you know, dentists and insurance? Like any industry that you decide to go into with Cutco, um, I, I just think it's a huge opportunity for all of us. So this applies to like any industry, but don't be like a flash in the pan, don't just like go and like show up and then not be around. If you're gonna do this, like you wanna build the relationships. Um, my, John, uh, John Burroff recommended a book to me earlier this year that was freaking awesome. And it's called The Athena Doctrine. And it's how women and the men who think like them will rule the world. And it's actually like not really, like as you read it, it's like um, there's a lot of People think like qualities that people think are female, but they're actually like everybody. But one one thing they talk a lot a lot about in the book is just nurturing. So like go into your association or whatever you join and like nurture your relationships. So there was only like 500. There's only 500 members in our HBA, which means like not many people. It's like not like 500 people each event. It could be like 40 or 50. So just kind of like when you go, like practice your networking skills you've learned and really find out who are the connectors, who are the people that like seem like they've been around a while, seem like they know what they're doing, and those are the people that you just want to build like a really respectful friendship with because that's been like just golden for me over the years is just like, you know, being friends with these people and, and seeing what resources they have. Oh, that's kind of a funny story. Um, one of the reasons I joined the HPA too is like my uncle Phil, Uncle Phil, he's been in the home builder industry for like 20 years, and he told me since I was 16, I should, I should just like get involved with these people. And every time I looked into it, I was like a poor college student. I was like, I'm not gonna make $600. I don't even know what this is. But um, so it, when I joined the Home Builders Association, my name was Katie Fingerhut, so I could piggyback off his last name, but I was Katie Haney in the realtor industry. So it's kind of, I had two different names, which is kind of weird. Okay, so um, this is like random, but for anything in your business, call all your referrals. I think we all could benefit from being just more organized, but just call everybody. Does anyone take bold in here? What do you guys think of bold? Bold is this like eight week course that Keller Williams puts on bold up and a bold stands for business objectives of life by design. Um, but I went through like that eight week course and it was, it was just really awesome. And they had an activity one day where we just wrote down like three people that we knew and we just reached out to them and did our like referral script. And that's what led me to a lot of really cool people. So anyway, brand thought, call all your referrals, find a way to call everybody because you never know where your relationships are gonna lead. Um, okay, so one thing I just wanna say also is just to diversify. Um, yeah, I said this before, but average millionaire has seven streams of income. So think about ways that you can there was a conversation I had with actually my region manager a few years ago, Mike Muriel, and I was doing like a million different things and I was like involved in just like regional trainer and help and hell right miracle morning something. I like had a million things going on and then obviously like two little kids. And he was like, you know, like he, have anyone ever taken CBI? Yeah. yeah. So like on my CBI I was like the three builder, merchant, and uh, banker were like pretty even, and then my innovator was like super low. And he said if you bring that up ten percent then it actually brings everything else up 90%. And I said, well, how do I, how do I innovate more? Like, I'm not that innovative. And he said, just schedule it. And so I just started taking just stuff I didn't want to be doing out of my schedule and putting more innovation time in. And now it's like tons of my time is spent innovating. And that's like where I'm thriving, where I'm in my flow. So try to figure that out. Um, what, what do you need to spend more time doing? Because maybe it's not like you need to delegate more to do more appointments. Maybe it's you need just like to put in more stuff where you're in your flow because the more you're in your you know, flow and place that you need to be in is your business is gonna get a lot better. Let's see, I'm sure you guys have some questions and I talk really fast, but yeah, this it's program isn't for everybody. I hope you guys got some ideas. I hope this can be something you add to your business and I hope you have some cool success stories, but um, I think it could be a really cool way to sell a lot more Cutco and that's definitely what I want everyone in here to do. So I hope you guys liked it. What questions do you have? How much time do we have? You go to your associations and or association, you do your thing, you network. Do they have CEU credit courses? Oh, yeah. Stuff like that. How am I actually speaking? I want to actually. Oh, yeah. So, what I did is I joined and then I just asked, um, what are all the consoles that you have? And they have like 
sales and marketing at ours and professional women in building and custom home builder and like green building or something. No one knows that. But anyway, um, I just like asked how much it is to sponsor and it was like $150 to sponsor each one. And then I got to speak for three minutes in front of the group. So that, that's what I would do. The other one, I just joined the one, in, the one in Illinois and they don't, you can't speak at anything. So I'm just gonna call my clients and say, what's the most fun events? Because that's like, that's, a, that's I mean, as many of you found realtors, the best way to network is just go to fun stuff, go to their bowling stuff. There was some like boat booze cruise. I don't think I'm gonna go on that, but you know, there's a lot of like fun things you can, fun things you can do, but ask if you can, what councils they have and how many people are on the council and then just go sponsor those. Yeah. I just wanted to share with everyone in the room. I've spent a lot of time with Katie this past fall, just like calling her and connecting with her about the builder stuff because I really didn't know where to start. And she basically shared these things with me that she just shared. They seem like such basic principles, but I actually applied all of these. And I have already a great relationship with the New Builders Association to the point where they're giving out Cutco as their award for all of their like remodelers awards and home show awards and builders awards and stuff. And that's going to be my sponsorship fee because they're always trying to like, it's about design and skill and craft in this industry. And so there are all these awards and stuff. And I just wanted to share that I would have never gotten there without Katie, but I also wanted to plug that in that there's a huge opportunity to use your Cutco as leverage, as prizes for and awards and recognition for that kind of stuff. So really, you know, love on that person that's in charge of the sponsorships and use cut code to your advantage because I think that I found a really wonderful opportunity just by taking Katie's advice, which is exactly what she just said. So it seems basic, but it is so valuable with that builder's association. That's what I always, I, I've talked to Roland a lot and he always said like that people just don't take a lot of action on some of the stuff that he recommends and that's just what you did is took action. Oh, that's where it reminds me. There's another cool thing that you should all be implementing into your everything you do. Um, there's some stat, like, I, I remember hearing a talk like eight years ago, some like conference call that John Rule was giving that he like put, he has a certain budget every month for giving Cutco back to people. Um, so, and then I read something the other day that said you should put 20% of your, 20% um, of your profit back into marketing. So something I specifically did to like implement that is anytime I go to an event or a trade show or just something where um, like I was, I talked to a lot of people throughout the day. I tried to take good notes, and then I identify the top 10 to 20 percent of prospects, and I order engraved Cutco for them with their logo. And it's like, I mean, it's a, it's an expense. It's definitely like an investment, but those, those turn into sales a lot of the times. But don't just do it for everybody. But um, just always be thinking about like, who are my top 10 percent of like prospects right now, or maybe clients that were great that you want to get back and like get back on the program and invest in Cutco for them. Yeah, what other question? Yeah, Colleen. Um, the way that you sell it, just because I never really focus on that industry, obviously we're a lot of realtors. They have a lot of meetings and events that you're speaking at, and then able to close, and they're basically sold in that period? Or no, it's, it's like a lot of like one on ones, and um, there's not, I mean, just the, like the, the only time I've really spoke at stuff a lot was were the council meetings. Um, so it's a long term thing, but. Um, the, like, like I said, it's like a family. So once a few of the top dogs are doing it, it's kind of like everybody will do it. They did, I talked about this like four years ago at a realtor uh, summit meeting, but in our market, a few of the, it is, um, one of the few of them do these speed sellings. You can like have a table for 750 bucks and you sit down with um, like 15 builders throughout the day for 10 minutes each. And that was really good. Like I wouldn't sell a ton at those, but I'd get like two or three on the program that would like tell other people and um, so that's, you can ask about those types of events. Okay. There's not a lot of like speaking in front of groups that much. Yeah, John. Uh, so what's the turn time when you're looking at like closing somebody in a realtor? We say you have to close them in like 30, 45 days for a builder. Are they working in 10 different tracks? Is it like one track and what time frame are you looking at? Just a year. I'm like, what, what are you guys going to build this year? And for, there's like, it's like two or three different, so there's custom builders and they're building like, you know, a lot of times they're building like, 500,000, well in St. Louis, maybe for you guys it'd be like 2 million, but uh, 500,000 to like a million dollar houses, so they might only build like three or four a year. I have, a, I have like a ton of custom home builders, and so it's like three or four, um, but they're like really nice houses. So you just get them like four or five gifts, and a lot of times they'll like customize each one, they'll do the logo and then handcraft it exclusively for like the family, because they get to know them. They're like building this house for six months, 
And then you've got like the bigger builders um, that are doing, they could be doing like 100 to 500 houses a year. And that could be like a quick sale or it could be a process where you like meet with the owner, meet with the marketing person, it's like a longer process. Um, and then kind of like the middle people are um, like remodelers might be doing like, remodelers build houses too, so they might be doing like 10 to 20 jobs a year. So it's usually like they're thinking in terms of the year, like they'll buy their lumber for a year, or like two years, they'll buy their home plumbing. Faucet. Oh, my friend Angie, she sells like plumbing supplies, call her Angie the plumber, she's not a plumber. But yeah, she sells like the faucet, so they get their faucets for the year. So, um, you just kind of, yeah, ask them for a year. Yeah. So I see the oh. benefit for... You can go first. So go and then oh, Aaron. sorry. I see the benefit for remodelers and, and like custom home builders. What is the benefit for like a, a builder that's building 100 homes to put a piece of cut in each home? What is, what is their benefit or return on investment? Um... They have a clothing gift, top of mind, awareness for the client, repeat business, because they, they the, I think the average person buys a house every seven years, so my builders that are like the, like that are building the tract homes, their goal is to get a client into their two bedroom house, and then when they have kids seven years later, build them into the next subdivision. So they, they want a brand with the family, so the family continues to be, you know, a paying family home client at every one of their houses that they're moving into. And then, oh, I had one builder that did, um, actually I have a few to do this. They buy, um, like, they want to find good realtors to market all their properties. Because if they get a really good realtor that's good at marketing, that realtor can, like, sell all their houses for them. So they always try to give realtors incentives to, like, market a McBride home or whatever. So they started giving a block to, like, each realtor that sold one of their homes. And then any realtor that sold another one of their homes, give them a knife. So they did the black thing, but they haven't really like kept track of their realtors. Uh, I'll let you know how that goes. But that's something else you can do. That's another benefit. But yeah, they're trying to like get that client to be that builder's client for life when they move, when they tell their friends, all that. Um, Aaron, um, on the note of talking about selling them in terms of the year, do you find that most builders are paying in full or doing a five pay or are you going to ten? Oh yeah. So I just okay. So yeah, my and my ten pay is different than Andy's, but I just anything works. I just. Like pretty much anyone I talk to, realtor or, lend, or uh, lender or builder, I just say, what do you think you'll give out over the course of a year? We're going to get you a year supply and we can bill you over five or ten months. Okay. And so, like, usually it's, yeah, it's like even over paid full, five, ten. It's just, yeah, that's how you present it. Okay. You just kind of like pick the option for them. Yeah. Like that. Jesse? What are some other, you said that home builders are kind of introducing you to the other stuff that, like, they could buy for there's lots of things you buy for the house. So what are I guess oh. that's the first yeah. tier. What are some other tiers we should be on the lookout for like, oh this person they probably take gifting pretty seriously. Like other industries? Yeah. Like within the home builder sphere maybe. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Like yeah, kitchen. Yeah, cabinet, yeah. Cat cabinet counters, flooring. Flooring's a good one. Windows. Interior designer. But, yeah, but yeah. It's, it's, you start building relationships, going to those events, and then, um, yeah, they can all be clients. Anybody else? Are you guys excited to sell more knives this year or what? Yeah. All right, it's going to be awesome. Matt, thank you so much. Is your average order for gift higher, much higher? Yeah, that's the other, it's like, I don't know why, but it's like eight eight hundred realtor and eight hundred average order and thirteen hundred for builder. I don't. It could be just the, that like my skills are better now or something, or I don't think it has a reflection on the builders. Who knows? Anybody else? You guys like it? Have a good big pin summit. Yeah. <laughs>